And then 20 days before he died, he came out on the cover of Time Magazine. I have I have the original picture, and I, I don't know where it is. He's got one in his mouth and two in each hand. I was there the day you opened that up. You yep. buried him that day. Yep. Yep. She Yo, got yeah, a letter yeah. the day she was burying him. She got a letter from Ricky. November 2nd. And it was him holding Time Magazine in each hand, and, one in his mouth. And happy October. It was from October. Yeah. Yeah. But, all right, we'll get we're long winded. So, okay. But, you know, that's just how we receive it. Now, I knew Ricky from a child. We met in third grade. He left Our Lady of Chesterhova. A little, the a little Italian, Italian boy going Polish, to a Polish school. In a Polish school. Catholic school. <laughs> but, but, I, I never understood but, that. But then he came to Quidnick, <laughs> yeah. which was right across the street, the, private, the public school. That's where I met him. And we just grew up like a mile and a half from each other. We'd skate yep. on the ponds. Every kid I, I probably was winter, in his company so many times and uh, didn't know. Every kid in our neighborhood in the winter, I skated on, yep. on the ponds. On the pond. We but we were at the space. other end, yep. and we'd come down to the same so pond. So Ricky was a hockey player. I mean, we weren't high school players. We were just pond players. But we played, and I have to laugh now, because we'd skate literally from like 9 in the morning, stop to get dinner, and come, come right back. back. The lights were on. We'd skate again. But we learned real quick there was a pizza place right down the road from Ricky's house, the Carpentry House of Pizza. Um, Mr. Sullivan was a I great guy. No party. We would call in and order a couple of pepperoni pizzas, knowing nobody's picking them up. And then we'd walk from the pond down there, yeah, and Mr. Sullivan husbands, would say, thieves. Hey, nobody picked these pizzas up. <laughs> so he'd feed us, and he knew it was us. We'd eat the pepperoni pizzas, oh, and then walk a mile and a half back to the pond to skate. But that's how I'm glad I, I didn't hang out things. with you people then. Well, <laughs> and he was a heck of a baseball player. Yeah, he was he, a great baseball he, player. We played softball together um, as a bunch of teenagers against. Um, my father was on the Coventry Police team. They were like the, the town champions. And they, most of them were cops. And, and most of played, them were adults. And, and they, they were teenagers. They, we were like the good group of kids in the neighborhood. They, they, they were kind of like our mentors. And. But. All these guys were fantastic. The guys I hung out with were fantastic baseball players. Ricky was left-handed and played and shortstop. Was the best because, in town. Which is unheard of. You don't put a lefty in the infield unless he's a first baseman. Well, or a he pitcher. was good. But he was quick enough where he could cover the gap. And he'd have to do a complete turn. I don't know how. He was a chubby little guy. But he was fast. Him and Chris Iannotti. Yep. But that's all I remember him. He was a great baseball player. Um, and when I joined the Marine Corps... It was 78 when I went in the delayed entry. I met him in 78. And then I ran into Ricky and told him I was going to the Marine Corps. I went. I came home on leave. Well, not from boot camp, but from England when I was mm -hmm. stationed in England. And I ran into Ricky on your class day, or his class day. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, I just joined the Marine Corps. And it was like, really? He said, yeah. And he told me when he was leaving. And I, you know, I was like the typical, hey, good luck. And, and we shot the breeze for a while. And then... That was the last time I ever spoke to him, except when I came home on leave before you, the week before you got married. I, you guys were walking. But it's funny because my my husband, Rick, he said, hey, I heard Norman LaGault's in town. Maybe we should invite him to the wedding. And I go, I, I don't really know him, but if you want him to come. And we were just so busy that we didn't do it. But I, last time I saw him was walking down the street. You guys were walk by my house, and I lived down the main road, and there were no houses like a mile either way in my house, just woods. And Ricky, I remember that. came day. by and I was in the screen. I said, hey, Rick. And I remember that day and I'll That's tell the you. last time I ever spoke to him. And then I, you guys got married. I never looked at another man. I, he was my guy. 